Before they can go to the front, there are weeks of drills. We watched a mixture of new conscripts. and wounded who were being returned to combat, being put through their paces. This training ground at Yavrif, near the Polish border, is a long way from the real fight. But it's the nearest the 24th Brigade has to a hometown. Two years ago, the 24th had around 2,000 soldiers. Volunteers and conscripts have flowed in, forming new battalions and boosting the brigade's strength to around 7,000. That more than trebling of numbers matches what's happened to the Ukrainian army as a whole. And all the while, casualties have had to be replaced too, so thousands of troops have been fed through to the brigade. The Ukrainian army has had to relearn the lesson, the bitter lesson of 20th century conflict, that war between states consumes lives on an enormous scale. And they're having to train reinforcements continuously here to put them up to the front. We saw quite a few older men here, and in recent months there's been a debate in Ukraine about those who've dodged the call-up and whether willingness to fight is diminishing. But for the wounded we spoke to, there's still a determination to serve. Dennis lost part of his hand in shelling, but after months of treatment, he wants to get back to his mates in the brigade. I have problem with middle fingers. Medicine uh, tried to save this finger, uh, take bones from here, but it don't work and it's cut. But it's okay. It's not my head, not my any organs. Vital organs. How long were you in hospital then? Oh, from February to the May. Uh, four months, three months. And do, do you have to go back to, to no, the unit maybe or do I, you want to go back? I want to go back, but uh, this finger have very bad working. And when it's make a little better, I go to the Donbass. We headed east on one of Ukraine's unstoppable night trains. So the soldiers fight in the far east of Ukraine, near Bakhmut, and most of them live in the far west, near Yavoriv. And that means several hundred kilometers separate them from their loved ones. And getting back and forth obviously consumes a great deal of time on those rare occasions when they get leave. This area around the villages of Turetsk and New York has been the scene of fighting since Russia began its intervention in the Donbass nine years ago. Jimmy commands a company that's about a hundred soldiers. It's currently holding a section of the front line and he offered to take us up to the trenches. While there has recently been some Ukrainian progress not far away near Bakhmut, the front line here has been stable for a long time. We'd be heading to trenches just a few hundred metres from Russian lines. Some airburst shells landed not far away soon after we set off. They may have been aiming at Ukrainian soldiers coming back from the trenches. But they're so used to sporadic shelling that they stopped to pick figs. Sash. And happily, the weather was on our side. So they're moving with greater confidence down this road, although we're a very short distance from the Russians because the wind is bad for drones and that will keep us relatively safer as we go forward. As we got closer to what they call the zero line, the path through minefields got narrower and narrower. We went as far as we could go, 
to where they've pushed the positions forward. It's a new one, because before everything was burned. Jimmy's survived multiple wounds, leading the men to think he's got a charmed life. He showed us to a place where we found soldiers busy trying to improve the protection offered by their trenches. The rain was falling, reminding everyone that autumn is coming. With the prospect of staying put here and the summer offensive having come and gone without delivering a decisive result. I think the war is a very long term, because there is a very large line of the front, and it's easy to get out of it. I think it's impossible, because the war is long, and we are ready for a long war, so we are ready for the capital. So the soldiers are resigned to staying here as the rain and cold come and their Russian enemy stalks them. The men here have been conscripted or volunteered for the duration. They have no idea when they'll go home which poses challenges for their commanders. Ми всі прекрасно розуміємо, що ну немає терміну, коли війна закінчиться чи коли там наша служба закінчиться, тих людей, які мобілізовані, чи там тих людей, які служать за контрактом. ми постійно проводимо так, скажімо, роботу з цим особовим складом щодо роз'яснення цих всіх аспектів. І За винятком окремих якихось там моментів, я не знаю, які чи, чи можна їх брати до, до уваги, в принципі, весь особовий склад, який є в підрозділі, він розуміє, що просто так це не закінчиться. Тобто має бути якесь логічне завершення цьому. І вони розуміють, що немає там дати їхнього повернення додому. And for those serving on, as with the brigade's artillery batteries, there's the knowledge that many thousands have bribed their way out of being called up, something we found one of the older volunteers remarkably philosophical about. You obviously have a strong feeling about the need to serve. What do you think about those people who are maybe giving bribes and things to avoid it? It's, of course, the choice of everyone. Who thinks, 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 this is an example of how they're keeping spirits up. A variety show brought to the soldiers in the field. There was a conjurer. And a mind reader too taking the men's minds off their daily reality for a couple of hours at least. <laughs> Top of the bill was singer Daniela Zayushkina, <laughs> whose lyrics about a faithful lover awaiting their return transported the soldiers to a happier place. As the war stretches on month after month, with no obvious end in sight, the question of the soldiers' psychological health, their ability to keep going, looms. And the army here makes every effort it can to try and bolster them at that level. But when the performances were over, 
The bus is pulled up and the troops returned once again towards the battle. Out on the front line, Jimmy took us back from his forward positions. We were happy for a lift and no matter the state of the transport. The lines may not have changed much in this area during years of fighting, but Jimmy reckons the invasion has helped them win another battle, that for open-ended support from the Ukrainian public. At the end of these days with the brigade, we've learned a story that reflects the wider Ukrainian army story, which is of hard-won lessons early on, of great losses, but also of great forbearance and determination coming through uh, with grit and determination in a conflict which, let's face it, few of these soldiers have any idea how it will end. The transformation of attitudes is a result of national mobilization, in which the 24th Brigade simply mirrors what's happened in the wider army. If peace requires difficult compromises, it could be hard to sell to these soldiers.